Hey everyone, in this video we're going to continue our exploration of how to speed up your code and the concept we're talking about in this video I would argue is the most important concept in speeding up your code um, especially if you're doing stuff with scientific computing uh, big data operations with statistics things like that um, and it's called vectorization the idea is that you have a big list of numbers and this could be a one-dimensional list or a matrix or whatever but just to keep it simple let's say you have a big list of numbers from one to one million for example every number from one to one million in our case we just want to divide each of these elements by two no big deal now how would we do that before knowing anything about what vectorization means at all Pretty straightforward, we would just write a for loop. We would say for every item inside my big list of numbers, go ahead and do i divided by two and put that result back in the list or put it in a different list or something. That'll achieve my goal. Indeed, it will achieve your goal. But it doesn't take advantage of the parallel computing um, capabilities as well as some other stuff we'll think about um, of a lot of modern computers. What that basically means is that if you notice what we're doing, it doesn't matter if you do one of these elements before a different one, or if you do one chunk here and you do one chunk there. Each of these elements, uh, when we do this division by two operation, is independent of each other. We don't care if they happen in a different order or simultaneously or not simultaneously. It really doesn't matter. And that's where vectorization comes in. Modern computers have a bunch of different uh, processing units called cores. You might have heard this terminology before. What we can do is take advantage of that by saying that we're going to do a fourth of this list. Let's say, for simplicity, let's just say we have four cores, which can operate independently on our computer. We can take a quarter of this list, do it on one core, take a different quarter of the list, do it on a different core, and then for the other two cores, also do a quarter of the list. Now we basically take in our time and divide it by four, because we're doing uh, all four parts simultaneously and then just putting the results back together at the end. So that's one uh, conceptual understanding of how vectorization works it applies to an entire list um, at the same time rather than on individual elements of the list one at a time and we get a crazy speed up that way. Um, to talk about the true details of it, to go into the nitty gritty of the computer would be maybe outside of what we're trying to achieve right now. But the idea is you want to basically think about you're taking advantage of your computer's architecture to do stuff simultaneously or on entire lists at the same time rather than on singular elements of the list one by one. Okay, so that's why vectorization is so fast on matrices or lists of numbers. Now, I do want to offer a couple more ideas about why it's fast in um, a particular programming language. So, in Python, we use this NumPy library, which is numerical Python, in order to do these vectorization operations. We'll see that when we look at the code in just a minute. But I wanted to give an idea of why NumPy is so fast. One is this um, idea we talked about. So, it can do stuff in parallel. So, we can uh, basically do some operations while we're doing other operations, which can speed stuff up. There's two other reasons NumPy is fast, at least two other reasons. Another reason is that uh, it takes advantage of the same data types. So if you know a little bit about Python, you know that you can define a list in Python and you can put anything in that list. You can put a number, followed by a string, followed by an object, followed by a dictionary. You can really put anything you want. With NumPy arrays, you basically tell it up front what kind of data type is going to be in there. You say that I'm going to put only integers in this list or only floating point numbers in this list. What that means is it's more restrictive. You can't do anything you want, but it means that if it knows exactly what kinds of data types are in the list, it can be much more optimized on operating on these data types. For example, this division by two always makes sense if your list contains numbers only, which can speed things up. And the last reason NumPy, or one of the last reasons that NumPy is very fast is uh, locality. So NumPy basically takes your entire matrix, let's say you have like a thousand by thousand matrix of uh, floating point numbers or decimals, it puts all of that into the same area in your memory, which means that when you're doing these operations, it's all happening within one realm or one chunk of your memory. And just the fact that that space is close together means that these operations are gonna go a lot faster. Contrast that with uh, just a Python list, which may not live in the same part of memory. You might have one object that's living over here. You might have one uh, part of the list that's living over here and over here. And even though when you print the list out, it looks like it's all in one place. That might not be truly how it's stored in memory. And that can slow things down because now you're trying to do operations on stuff that's living far apart in memory. And that can slow down um, because you have to go fetch all these things and do operations in different places. Okay, So here's just three offerings of reasons why the NumPy library, which is just one 
form of vectorization in computer science. Most modern computing languages have some form of vectorization, and they use similar ideas to this. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and look at the code and see how much faster we can actually make things if we use vectorization. All right, so let's take a look at some concrete examples of vectorization. We'll be using Python for this one. Um, I'm importing just two libraries, NumPy, because I need to do operations involving vectorization. Um, the NumPy library in Python, you've probably seen it used a couple times in my previous code efficiency videos, but to give you a quick explainer on it, it helps you do operations on lists in a vectorized way. That is to say that vectorization, this idea of computing the same thing on different parts of a list at the same time to speed things up, um, making sure everything is in one contiguous block of memory, um, doing stuff at a lower machine level, all these things are already inherent in NumPy. So it's really powerful library to use whenever you're doing manipulations with big arrays of numbers. And of course the time library to measure how long things take. Now, so I have here n is, how many zeros is this? 10 million. Okay, so I have two lists, x and y, which are filled with 10 million random numbers. That's what this code block does. My first goal here is going to be add the two lists element-wise, which means I want to construct a new list z, where each element of z is the corresponding element of x plus the matching element in y. So that's what I mean by let's add them element-wise. First, let's do the non-vectorized version, just the naive way. We'll start the timer, initialize our z list as empty, and then simply do for k in range 10 million or n, we're going to append the uh, kth element of x to the kth element of y and put that in z. That's exactly what I want. Get the end time and we report how long it took. So this took nearly 10 seconds. So that's not very fast. It's not crazy slow, but you can imagine that as n gets very, very large, this is not going to scale up very well. Let's look at the vectorized version. Notice that the only piece of code here is z2 is equal to x plus y. You're going to notice that this is a lot cleaner than the three line version I had written up here with the for loop. And why am I allowed to do this? Why does this work the way I expect it to work? This is because x and y are numpy arrays. In fact, if x and y were regular Python lists, you're not going to find that's going to do the same thing you want. But because this vectorization idea is so inherently built into numpy, we're allowed to do that syntax and it does exactly what we want. So really what this is saying is that take each element in x and add it to each element in y. We can just write it compactly in this format. So we do that. We find it takes 0 0.085 seconds. Compare that to the 10 seconds it took before. Of course, let's verify we got the same answer. So if I do z1 from the non-vectorized version equals equals z2 from the vectorized version and check if they're all equal, I get true. So I got the same answer. And what speed up did I get? If I divide the first time by the second time, I sped it up by over 100 times. That's great. That's amazing. Okay, so you want to use a vectorized version whenever you can. To just close this video with a more um, higher dimensional case, what if we are trying to do some matrix multiplication? So in this case, we have n is equal to 200, and we define two random matrices, a and b, which are each 200 by 200. Uh, now our goal is to multiply them, so we want a times b, matrix product. So in our non-vectorized version, we're going to say the product is initially all zeros. Again, size 200 by 200. We start the timer, and then we have a bunch of for loops. This code looks super complicated compared to what you'll see in a second. But let me explain this. Uh, so we iterate over all the rows and all the columns. That's what the i and j do. Um, we grab the ith row of a. And actually, I realized here I could actually hoist that out, because this is only dependent on i, right? So that's an optimization I'm making on the fly. Okay, so we uh, in the ith row, we get the ith row of A, then we get the jth column of B, and then inside the nested for loop, we initialize the entry to zero. We have another for loop because we have to take the dot product of the ith row of A with the jth column of B. So we do entry plus equals each element of uh, the row A times each element of column B. So this is just a dot product here. And then at the end, we update the ijth element of the product with this entry. Okay? So let me run this again since I made an edit. Oops. Oh, I need to run these guys. So let's run that, run that, run this. So you see the code took seven, a little bit over seven seconds to run. Let's see what happens in the vectorized version. Notice it's much cleaner. And again, it's a one-liner. Usually you can do vectorized stuff in one or two liners if it's something simple. 
So here we simply just define the product as np dot dot. So the NumPy library already has this matrix multiplication operator built in, and you just put in the two things you want to take the matrix multiplication of, and it gives you the result, no problem. This took 0 0.045 seconds to run. Again, let's make sure we get the same answer. So I, what I did here is I took the mean of the matrix product from the naive way minus the matrix product from the efficient way. And I just took the absolute value of all the elements, took the mean, and I get a really small number, which means that, of course, they're not exactly the same because of numerical instability, but they're so close, they're the same. And what speed up do we get? We get a speed up of 7,600 times, okay? So on a 200 by 200 matrix uh, multiplication product, we get a speed up of over 7,500, okay? So this is just insane. This is why you always want to use vectorization in Python that comes in the form of the NumPy library, but it exists in all programming languages, okay? So that was an introduction to vectorization, why you should use it. I suspect we'll do more vectorization videos in the future because it's such an important part of speeding up your code, okay? So until next time.